Hey loves, how are you? Hope you've all had a good week. So, uh, my little action takers, I uh, hope you've been taking action on tracking your symptoms and feeling better this week. Uh, just uh, ping me a message uh, if you have or haven't. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. So today, I wanted to have a quick chat about, uh, I entitled it, The Other Truth of Menopause. Um, there was quite a big uh, documentary on um, on Monday, um, hi Jen, uh, uh, on Monday night, which was, um, gosh, now all these pinging things are dis disconcerting me. <laughs> hi Jan, hope your knee's better. So um, basically there was a big documentary about the menopause on Monday night and it was amazing because it was actually on primetime TV, you know, nine o'clock, BBC One. And usually, usually, I think that's like Cops and Robbers, isn't it? And other shows like that. Uh, absolutely, that sort of stuff. Or I think the nine o'clock news, or maybe the nine o'clock news moved to 10 o'clock and I'm really out of touch. So overall, it's really, really good for, I think, all women and girls and men and boys, everybody, to have such a major life transition on the biggest TV sort of public distributor um, on prime time. Like I said, I think that's absolutely fantastic. I really, really do. I think um, the broadcaster who did it, Marilyn Frostrup, was 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 really engaging. I think the things that I mean, inevitably, there's been an awful lot of feedback from lots of quarters. Is that you know when you try and condense so much information and material into one you know one hour there's obviously a lot missing. And I suppose a couple of the things that I think I just want to share with you or flag with you, because I don't know if any of you were able to watch it or watch my webinar, because there's some overlap in, in, in some of the things that she raised and things that I think, you know, feel quite differently about. So I just thought I'd raise them with you. Because I think the first thing was that it was more about her personal journey and, you know, four minutes in, she was definitely talking about her HRT and the different HRTs. And I have to say, it was really quite funny because they actually had, you know, soft focus pictures of all her different HRT packets. And they were all the ones that gave me terrible symptoms because I've got photos of the exact same the exact same packets that made me feel dreadfully ill and nearly caused me to have a stroke. So it was really, really funny with her saying how fabulous they were. So moving on from that, there was an awful lot that was medicalized. And I suddenly started thinking, you know, it's really quite interesting because the menopause is no different to other life transitions. And I've got a friend who's in their 50, we went to school together, you know, I've, I've known these, these friends since we were all about 14 at secondary school. And um, it happens to be a, um, a man, in fact, there's two of them, and they both had heart problems. And they drank too much and eaten too much and not done enough, enough exercise for years. And so they were given statins, um, you know, like this wonder drug to unclog your arteries so you can continue uh, drinking too much, eating too much and not doing any exercise. And I suddenly was really struck by that because I think that although that's not what she was saying at all, I think HRT and the medical route is exactly the same. It's like, first off, go to HRT, don't look at any of the lifestyle things. Now, she did talk about some of the lifestyle things, but it was very much second place, or I felt it was very much second place. I'd be interested to hear what anybody else thinks about it. And the things that did come up, which I think are really, really valuable, are issues related to obesity and alcohol consumption uh, by, by women. And then there was the most amazing study, which I just thought was fantastic because it really spoke to some of the work and the research that I've done, which is all on stress reduction. So obviously I think it's completely fabulous. They had Professor Myra Hunter from King's College and, and uh, uh, in this documentary, as part of the documentary, they, they, they work with a group of women over eight weeks tracking symptoms. Ah! I mean, how happy was I to hear about people tracking their symptoms when it's what I bang on about over an eight week period and using different techniques around mindset, stress reduction techniques like proper breathing and things like that um, in order to 
reduce or prevent hot flushes, night sweats, anxiety, stress, etc., etc. And the results were really, really incredible. And I think that that, for me, was the best thing about the whole documentary. Because although it, was, it seemed like, I mean, Mariela Frostrup actually said that she thought just breathing was more stereotypical, hysterical women type thing, which I, I don't agree with at all, actually. And if you can just breathe properly and therefore reduce your symptoms and not need HRT, then surely that's a good thing. So I think the takeaway message was there's so much that you can do to reduce or prevent your symptoms if you're really, really struggling at work with your menopause symptoms uh, without necessarily going for HRT. And if you do add HRT into the mix, absolutely, but do it within that big you know, stress reduction program. The last thing, obviously, which I say every week, is the action taking. Because the thing is that this group of women work together in a group and they track their symptoms every day for eight weeks. And that brought them, gave them the realization about their triggers and their stressors and what I always call, you know, what I always tell you is they're hidden saboteurs because the day, your unit of operation is your day. That's where women need to look because if you want to get back to the top of your game, if you want to improve your productivity, if you want to improve your focus, if you want to get your confidence back, get your va va voom, va va vooming, then you've got to take action on a daily basis. Yeah, small nudges and adjustments. You've got to analyze your day. So you do your audit, then you track your symptoms, and then you plan accordingly. So as usual, darlings, uh, I, any feedback or questions would be really great. Much appreciated. Don't forget to book a call if you're um, wanting to talk through how you can get support to make those changes that I've just been outlining. And so somewhere, 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 the link is probably over there or the other way, that way, uh, on the screen. And um, look forward to hearing from you. Loads of yummy love. Bye.